Hi, Gemini. Welcome to your mid-September reading. All right, apologies for not being able to see my face and apologies for this being a bit late. I am recovering from a concussion and it has taught me a lot about patience and being easy on myself and not being the workaholic that I am. <laughs> so I am adjusting and I hope you will too. Uh, I am almost back at it. So things are good. Alhamdulillah, things are good. Libra season will be back with the cuteness. But for now, let's take a look at what is going on with you, with us. So, Six of Cups really is the right way to begin because you are feeling that romantic vibe and you are feeling quite attractive and you are feeling this easy chemistry between you and basically anyone you are around. It's undeniable. Not only is it strange messages here and there, perhaps from the past, but it's also random messages. It's also friends telling you, hey, uh, I had a friend who was looking through my photos or at my Insta or whatever and uh, asked about you, thought you were really cute. It's messages basically of attraction and love coming at you from every direction possible. And instead of the past, well, let's be honest, instead of like the rest of 2020, where you haven't really felt the zhuzh, you know, you weren't really into it. You didn't, sure, there were moments um, in this year so far where we have felt love perhaps, but you know, that kind of excited, almost jittery feeling of really liking someone or knowing someone really likes you, that hasn't been a challenge we've energetically been up for. We kind of just haven't had the energy for it. So for us now, especially from the 13th onward, for us now to feel as Jupiter goes direct that we not only are attractive, not only are all these prospects coming towards us, but we are embracing it. We like it. We want it. We have the energy for it. We are engaging. That is the big difference. And when we engage, things get moving <laughs> quickly. People love when we engage. And then there's the star. So especially if it's an Aquarian, okay? So this energy can come through as a person or just as an energy that you're dealing with in your life. So if this is a person, right? Then they're coming up really, really strong. If this was your personal reading as a Gemini and you have an Aquarian in your life that you think may be interested in you or you are interested in them, this is a very clear sign for you that they are attainable. They are on the same wavelength with you. Now, if this is not a, or, okay, wait, or if this is an Aquarian that you had that intense connection with here, but now you or them have moved on here, then realize that that thing is in no way over and it is at the forefront of your mind. Now, if this is just an Aquarian energy, not just, but if this is not a human, this is not a person, but an energy that's making its way into your life because you're embracing this attraction, you're embracing what co could turn out to be some romantic adventures because you're opening up to the idea of it the star energy, the Aquarian energy comes rushing in and to support. And what is that? It's your ability to read the energy and then use your mind and your childlike belief to direct that, whatever that is, channel it through your vision of exactly what it is that you want 
and then let yourself go. What do I mean by that? Take the risk, you know, want the thing, imagine the thing, feel the feeling of the thing and then letting it go. Two of Wands, letting it go with the full knowledge and belief that the way you have imagined it is the way it will happen. This is a pretty basic and fairly widely used tool by Geminis. We know how to do this really well. The kicker is that right now you can do it aided by this Leo and Venus energy, Jupiter goes direct energy of just being able to direct that attraction quotient like a weapon. I mean, I, I, I don't suggest you use it like a weapon. I suggest you do, as the cards suggest, that you channel it through that image, that, mm, let's say, kind of caricature, that, that idea you have in your mind of what a healthy, happy, love relationship looks like. And perhaps then the true read here is that if you know this energy is coming up on the 13th and starting to really, you know, make things move and, and, and it wants direction, it needs you to give it direction, right? If that's what's coming up, then isn't it very clear now that the next few days should be spent in deep contemplation and and uh, aided by the use of vivid imagination in producing or let's say procuring some image of what this would look like now for you because you've changed a lot if anyone has changed drastically in the past nine months, that is 2020, it is Gemini's because we adapt the quickest and with the least judgment. So as the world has completely changed again and again and again and continues to, we continue to adapt and evolve again and again and again because the rate of evolution, the rate of adaptation does not bother us. It can be slow, it can be fast, just like with everything else, we will adapt. And so while there are many people of many signs, and also including some of us Geminis, who have had an incredibly hard time ideologically adapting to what has become of the world, It is the easiest for those whose nature is built on the idea of evolving regardless of if it is through trauma or happiness or productivity or achievement. It doesn't matter. We don't have the hindrances that many other signs do where their abundance is only allowed to come to them, their evolution is only allowed to happen via certain doors and certain lanes. Geminis don't work that way. We accept all the info and all the energies through all the doors and, and let it sift itself out. If you can hear Big Pimpin in the background, that's my phone. And that's my ringer. <laughs> One second, I'll be right back. And we're back. So, what I was saying was, at the risk of sounding like you are listening to my podcast, I'm going to drink some water. I suggest you do the same. Please drink something. <laughs> I apologize for the noise and the construction in the background. I have spent many a day waiting for it to stop so I could do videos and I have realized that it's incessant and it is not going to stop. So here we are soldiering through. It is time now to take all of that adaptation, 
all that you have learned, all that you have gleaned from the ruins of what is left of what used to be our social world and apply it. Apply it to thinking up what kind of person you actually want. And, and really, honestly, no judgment here. This is regardless, irrespective of if you have someone or not. No judgment. What do you want? If, if the person you are with right now is close to what you want, perfect. Just imagine an even more perfect version of them. If you are with someone you don't want to be with, this reading is for you. If you are single, this is really an important time. Because Gemini, um, contrary to every popular belief about us, are extremely serious about commitment. That's why we don't like it and don't get into it. Because we understand the gravity of it. Jupiter goes direct in Capricorn on the 13th. Saturn goes direct in Capricorn on the 29th, I think. And as these planets start to move, you have this like push of energy. Now it's important for you to channel that push of energy in the right direction because if you try to channel it, into certain aspects of your life, it will stall and it will hurt. If you channel it into other aspects of your life, it will bring you great benefit and flow very smoothly. So which is which? Okay. So we have to keep in mind that Mars is in Aries and Mars is going retrograde or has already gone retrograde. I'm so sorry about that noise. This is exactly what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. Oh my God. Okay, I'll come back as soon as the noise stops, I promise. Hello. So I think they have stopped drilling because they are arguing and the school across the street is having recess. So if you hear screaming men and children, <laughs> welcome to New York. <laughs> so that energy has to be directed in the right way. When I say that energy, I mean the energy of the planets in, Sat in Capricorn that are going direct, namely Jupiter and Saturn. So what's the right way to direct that energy and what is most certainly the wrong way? Well, it plays out right here. The right way to direct it is to let it have a general influence over your entire life. Your love life, your family life, your career to a certain extent, but it's more diffused than that. It's in everything you're doing. You have more of a pep, you feel better, you're, uh, lighter on your feet. You don't feel like eating as much. You feel like getting outside and moving around and especially uh, considering the reading is being done today when there is this beautiful air trine. Uh, the moon is in Gemini right now and Mercury is in Libra. So we're having this beautiful moment of kind of light-hearted and yet cerebral moments, and it applies to everything in our life. We're seeing everything through this kind of beautiful rose-colored intellectual lens, right? And that's the perfect way to direct this energy, to pour it over everything in your life and, and watch everything kind of refine and glisten. The wrong way to direct this energy would be to try to put it solely into the pursuit of material gain, making money, promotion. That will backfire because Mars is retrograde. That aspect of your life is full of obstacles and hurdles, but you saw them coming. And we've been talking about them for a while. So here they are. And the one thing that you can be sure of is that with time they will dissolve. 
The other thing you can be sure of is the more that you press against them, you will hurt yourself. And so you can see the dilemma. You have an enormous amount of energy that wants to be directed a certain way. Your natural instinct, because of the nature of the energy, will be to direct it towards the thing that drives us. The security and safety we need and that we attain through making money. You will naturally want to pour this energy starting on the 13th into your work. And if you do so, when, you know, those obstacles are lying kind of dormant right now. If you don't go walking down that path, those obstacles like a, like booby traps, they never pop up. And you don't have to endure getting past them or getting stuck in them because you just don't even go down that road. If you instead, like I said, pour it over your world. And, and what does that mean? That means what we're talking about up here, create it. Use this energy now to imagine not just material gain for yourself or success, but to imagine a happier, fuller, more rounded out life. Pour this magic, this like kind of kinetic energy, pour it into the cups that you're creating with your mind right now what you want things to be like, what you want things to look like, where you want to live. I'm driving cross country in a couple of weeks to go look at homes in Palm Springs. That is a drastic change from New York and Denmark. Does that mean that the changes you make when you pour this energy over your life, does that mean that the changes will be easy? No, but that's what makes it so great to do it now while you have this energy that, that is making it a bit easier than it would be otherwise. You know, the fool is there. The star is there. It is about taking risks and it is about trusting yourself and, and, and allowing your instincts to take the lead and let them direct this energy, not your fear, Mistaking your fear for your instincts is common for Gemini. And it's something we really have to work at to get better at being able to discern which is which. If we get lucky as Gemini, we never get too scared and so we never equate the two. But if we have trauma, as so many of us do, then it becomes hard to discern between the voices. So, is it fear or is it your instinct? Well, your instinct is never going to be a fear-based reaction. Your instinct is always going to say yes or no and here is the easiest way out, go that way now. Your instinct is the thing you know without being able to explain why you know. Your fear, you know exactly where that's coming from and why. You can trace the root of it back to something in your life from five minutes ago or 50 years ago. So use your instincts to push this energy into a kind of diffuse state all over your life, improving everything, embracing the attraction, embracing people coming to you, embracing how uh, popular you're becoming, embrace all of it. And you will see how what starts off looking a bit, uh-oh, what are we gonna do? You know, finances are getting a little bit scary it feels like a lot has been taken from me. How much more can I stand? And then seven of wands. And yet I am victorious. And even this struggle, 
Even the Mars retrograde struggle will teach you yet another really important lesson that will change your mind and evolve you once again. And don't forget, Jupiter has a special affinity for you. It's here. It wants to see you in love. It wants to see you happy. It wants to see you living larger than life and fulfilling all your dreams. And yeah, okay, one aspect of your life is a bit slow and, and rudimentary and tedious right now, but instead of getting bogged down in it, worried about it, hitting your head against a brick wall, how about instead we re re reroute that energy, like I said, and while we're diffusing this energy all over our life, how about we get on it and figure out some things that we can study and learn in the interim? From what I hear, every course MIT offers, you can take online for free. I don't know who that would appeal to more than a Gemini. The point is, you're going to fall ass backwards into good luck and it's all gonna work out. So what you do between now and then is really up to you. You could do a lot with it, or you can worry and hurt yourself and push things that are immovable at the moment and really frustrate yourself. Both are okay. <laughs> Both are allowed. One is just a lot more comfortable than the other because you're basing it on the knowledge of this pattern. Okay? I'm gonna get into the extended right now. We're gonna shuffle through for each card and talk about the different signs as well and then if you would like a personal reading or a live reading those links are below links for the rings and pictures of the rings are below as well and our favorite the daily horoscope which is a daily look at the astrological chart is on at the quietest revolution on instagram and that link is below as well all right gemini I'll see you in the extended in just a second. Love you, love you, love you.